So that's the end of the video, guys. We just finished here, and we're going to do the other video tomorrow. And we're here with the lovely uh, Compton Oh, I'm going to see Ellen. Okay, pleasure to see you. Um, so, what's your favourite thing to do in all of Balneario Camarillo? Oh, I really like to hang to the beach and the ferry It's so incredible. Said it. Any, anything else? Any nightclubs or anything to go to? Or? Oh, have the um, Cristo, Cristo uh, there and have a party. So, like a party there, and yeah. we will go this night, I think. Okay, and you're from Sao Paulo. Oh. You're from Sao Paulo? Yes, I'm from the countryside. Countryside? Ah, oh, okay. Countryside. Polistas are the best. They're so nice. Hey, nailed it. I'll be going with you. Hey, uh, so here we are. So like and subscribe, guys. And uh, that's the end of uh, the tour of Balneario Camarillo over here. Yeah. <laughs> Iron Man. Iron Man and Aquaman. Really cool, really cool. So here with some good mates, some Bella Horizonte, amigos aquí, many Jerez, best people. Muy simpatica. Hola. What vamos, amigo? <laughs> you did. <laughs> I'm gonna kick the football up and we got that. This is uh, my mate from uh, Mini Jaders. Oh, blood! Hey! Motorbomb! Motorbomb! Value! Motorbomb! Amigo, uh, you're from Mini Jaders? Uh, uh, Mini Jaders? Mini Jaders? Mini Jaders? And uh, Parana. 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 Oh, Motorbomb! Is that in the north? Parana is in the north? Oh! Uh. In the Paraná Sul. Sul, ah, Sul, ah, like Porto Alegre? No, 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 no. mais para cima. Mais para cima, São Paulo. Ah, ah São Paulo, ah. Sim, sim. Muito bom, bom polistas com rebado em São Paulo. Dos uh -huh. <laughs> dias passado, Dois muito rebado em Central, mas polistas, Avenida Polista, muito simpática. É muito bonito, né? Yeah, é muito bonito, pessoas. Valeu. Valeu. Valeu, sim. Yeah, you don't find this in Rio. This is so peaceful. Really uh, classy. You don't find that in real well. But yeah, this, that's the good about it. But the bad is, it's just too relaxing. You have yin and yang, they're good about it everywhere. And we have here, it's like Miami or some kind of. Posh place. But yeah, let me know your experience. If you come to Balneario, Cambrio, if you have any experience with girls or the adventures here. There's not much adventures here, it's just so relaxing. It's a family, PG-13 kind of place. Really, uh, nice. But yeah, really nice place. Look at that. Yeah, you, you found that, you found this, maybe in Leblon, you find people playing like that for money. Um, we need to, we need to go back to Leblon though. Just for the, uh, every time I'm in Leblon, I've always had great experiences with girls. I've been really, they push, they're full of energy. They push themselves out of the comfort zone. But here, everything's too relaxed. It's just a snail's pace. Stand by me. I can play Stand by me on the guitar. I should get on my guitar, I should, I should on my guitar with me. But yeah, I think uh, once I get this uh, out of my system and I um, go back to training in Rio, I'm gonna go to do one, one night in Leblon because every single time we've been in Leblon, either the beach or the nightlife, I've always a great reception for girls or anyone. Just plus you meet girls around the world. I meet girls in like from uh, South Africa. South African girls are the best. They just talk and talk and talk. I met one girl in South Leblon, and then we just um, she's from South Africa, and she just talks and talks and talks and talks. That's what South African do. They're so open. You can pull in that South African girl, really, so really, they're the best type of girls. Really adventurous, really strong, because they're all about adventure. And they're from a place where they mix, a lot of, a lot of them mix with the whites and the um, the blacks as well. The blacks as well. So it's very, um, so they know what it's like to be, uh, you know, to be white and black, you know. Uh, so yeah, if that makes any sense at all. Like, uh, they know what it's like, you know, the racism is really like, and you know, there's balance in this world. But people in Brazil, a lot of them, the majority of them are Brazilian, but in, uh, South, in uh, South Africa, a lot of them are uh, mixed between African and, uh, um, but yeah, Cape Town, like South Africa, has like a mix between Nigerian and lots of white people, like it's like 50-50. So they have a great understanding of uh, race. Whereas here, they think they're the best, you know, um, a lot of places do. Well, I mean, a lot of countries, like, I've seen a lot of countries where the majority is, you know, their native um, colour or their native race. A lot of them, uh, you know, they just think they're the best. But if you have a good balance of 50-50, then you realise uh, they're more open-minded. That's why Paraguay is kind of so good, because they almost have a balance. It's like 70% um, Paraguayans, like 30% European, German, that kind of stuff. 
so they're very tolerant of uh, white people there. So, so. If it's 50-50, it would be great, be perfect place for, um, for people. It's really back. Yeah, it's just really peaceful, but like, um, which is not good and all, but it's just, I need adventure, I need that thrill, you know, that adrenaline, you know, and it's, uh, you won't find that here. It's, uh, I think you find it, even in Petropolis you have the adventure because you have the mountain climbing. Like, look at, some places are here look like uh, LA or Miami, United States. But yeah, they're very easy to talk to here, the people, but just, but just uh, very, uh, how do you say, like, um, yeah, you won't get robbed here because it's very safe, so very secure. But everyone's clean and well, yeah, everyone's, everyone moves, everyone's just moving to snail space. In Rio de Janeiro, everything's like go, go, go. But everything is, it's just like a snail space. So yeah, talking to people is very nice and everything, but to ask them to be in a YouTube video, it's like, no, no, no. It's very, they're very shy, very nervous, very together with family and friends. Uh, so yeah, I'd like to go back to Rio just for just need adventure. I mean, it's a good place to live and everything just to feel nice. But um, if you want anything worthwhile, you have to go through the stress and the adventures and the, the adrenaline, you know, you have to, and that's what I have to do in Rio as well. So that's, we all, we all, you know, we all, there's all things we don't want to do. Like my friend, my poly friend commented on a video saying, oh, I don't want to go to the beach, it gets really crowded. I mean, we all, we, d we all want to, you know, lay in bed and just be comfortable, you know, but that doesn't accomplish anything. If it was, if it could be anything else, I'd live in LA, you know, I could go get a flight to LA, live in LA, get a job there, but I don't want to die with regrets. I want to be on my deathbed and just be able to smile and face death with saying I've done, done everything. I've done everything that my heart wanted to do. You know, I've done everything, I've tested everything, tried everything once, you know, we only regret the things we don't do, and I want to be on my deathbed and say, I did everything. You know, and that requires going through our comfort zone a little bit. You know, that's why people in Paraguay are, they end up looking fat or miserable by the age of like 25, because they end up just giving up and never breaking out of the comfort zone, staying in the comfort zone. And that leads to depression and regret is the biggest, it's the most harmful emotion physically. Like it breaks down your cells physically. You don't, you don't just feel it in your head or you, you know, you, it fills your whole body and that takes over your body and it kills you. So it makes them addicted to drugs or fast food. And that's what the social media lifestyle is the age causing. It's causing everyone to be too comfortable and never achieving anything worthwhile to it. So yeah, I just approached uh, a family, a nice girl there, but uh, she uh, doesn't speak any English, so we have a family, and the family's are really protective, so I think here, if you approach anyone, they get, everyone's going to be with their family, our friend, you know, usually the family, because they're visiting here, because they know it's a really safe place. It's usually families come here, because they know it's uh, really safe and really peaceful. So yeah, it's okay for picking up girls, just speaking to girls, it's really easy. And uh, they're from Rio de Grande, the uh, salt. But yeah, she's really safe, really nice, looking at me and everything, but... There's nothing I can say because he doesn't speak English. Uh, any, I mean, I speak a little bit Portuguese. No, it's not just that. Just uh, the guided by the family. As soon as I approach it, like the brothers are all looking at me, like you know, what's he doing here? So, so yeah, like and subscribe, guys, and uh, leave a comment on what you want me to see next. And this is the main thing to see. Everyone's just here at the end. But it reminds me of Fortaleza. It's like a, um, it's like a posh version of Fortaleza, an upgraded version of Fortaleza. Very peaceful, very relaxing. Um, but yeah, I, mean, I, th I think if I approached her by herself, you know, approached her, you know, one on one, or, or with her friends, it should be more receptive. You know, I, did, I, I, didn't, I didn't speak to her personally as well, I just spoke to her friends and her family. That's the thing, I used to speak to the father, I used to speak to the mother, you know, so they feel comfortable. Like, I was just speaking to the father, uh, speaking Portuguese, and she was just looking at me all, you know, uh, cartoon eyed. But that's what they do, but they don't, they don't, they're not going to go forward with anything, you know, ask for my number, especially in front of the family. That's the way they do it. That's the way they do it. Here. Usually alone, like I've had a Brazilians who've asked for my WhatsApp number straight away. Usually real, but usually a lot of them just want money. But um, a few of them, you know, ask like, "Are you single?" or something like this. You're single if they're here with their friends. And she probably would have done that if she was here with friends, you know. Like a lot of girls who feel interested, they just ask straight away. Five seconds in, even this 18-year-old doesn't level on. Just ask, "Are you, are you single?" After so, 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 you know. 
But yeah, I think Low Black's probably better to pick up girls here. It's too peaceful, it's too relaxed, it's too... So they don't break out of the comfort zone. Um, which is nice. It's nice to speak to girls. You can speak to any girl here. Um, really receptive and really intelligent. But obviously they're guarded by the family or whatever. I think you'd find a lot of that around, lot, lot of that around Santa Catarina, but... But yeah, I'll give this a uh, decent training, I'm just finished my training, lifting my heavy bags and uh, on the beach and then um, wash myself on the sea. Yes, yeah, so that's the whole family there. Yeah, we've got a long group. So it's just always good to approach them. I just speak to I speak to any family, just practice them with Portuguese. Plus he wasn't a 10 out of 10, so it doesn't really matter. But yeah, let's go. You speak to the guy there, that beach there isn't um, the best beach. But we'll walk up, this is where people, just behind the uh, wheels, where people get the picture taken for like Instagram because it looks really posh, like Hollywood Hills, but they said that beach over there. They said that's better if you go over there, that's more Mas Benito, so we'll try going over there. I think I saw on Instagram and Tinder as well, but that's where they're going to have lots of, um, that's where they have like, lots of Instagram models taking the picture. So I think this beach isn't good, but I think it's popular. Plus Praia Bla, Praia Bla, just over there. But we'll go to the next beach, Red Manana, to Suarez Hoya. Hey, happy birthday, Debbie. I uh, missed your birthday because I've been traveling a lot. <laughs> but yeah, there is the lovely Bonario Camarillo, how you pronounce it. But yeah, so peaceful here. As you can see, it looks like a Fortaleza bit of Miami. Uh, my, I thought my, Fortaleza was like the Miami of Brazil, but this is, I think this is like the real Miami of Brazil. Yeah, really uh, intelligent people. Like, you can actually relax here. I've got my bags here and like, I've just, I've just arrived here and it's just, uh, don't feel any dangers at all, I feel really chill. The sand is different as well. Like, look, you've got like Fortaleza, Miami to the left of you, and you've got. Rio de Janeiro, Ireland, to the right here. I think, yeah, that's actually surfing over the beach, there's more kind of like tropical kind of beaches over there. Because uh, like I said, like all the um, the best places that people don't go to aren't the touristy places that you always see. Like I was on Tinder and I saw lots of girls on Tinder who kind of live or have uh, beach, beach photos just over there. That might be the nicer beach. The main attraction here is just over there. You might see a wheel, there's a big wheel at night time. Yeah, it looks much adventure to do here, this is it. This is up by the main tourist thing. People just come here to chill and relax. Because that's what I think is doing Paraguayans do, they're not you know I think adventures are too stressful for them because they're the more civilized, more yeah more civilized kind of people. So they yeah, kind of chill, they can't deal with stress. It's like real just near over chiefs. It's too stressful for them too much. This is really cool. It's like professional volleyball, actual professional like in Flamenco you just practice by yourself or you know you just practice with a group of guys and like I do and just uh well this is actually real cool volleyball. Yeah I'm right. I mean this is like it's a lot cleaner than Fossil Laser, but it reminds me of the same because Fossil Laser is just like lots of high kind of rich kind of st style buildings next to the beach. But the beach is a lot cleaner than Fossil Laser. Uh, used to seeing pictures here with um at the beach, the beach the beach doesn't look the water doesn't look as uh, as clean as the Rio de Janeiro or some beaches in Rio. We'll have a dip in it and see what it's like. Yeah, I mean, I might sound devoured, but I mean, I'm just, I'm just a really peace, really peaceful here. It's just a good break from uh, Rio de Janeiro. It actually feels safe and no stresses. Like, you have people signs up here, but like in Rio de Janeiro and Copacabana, you have people shouting in your face like, oh, hello, 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 sell this, sell this. Just can't relax at all. But here, it's just all Argentinians, Paraguayans, Bolivians. You come to escape. Like this is so cute. You, you don't see families like in um, on the beach a lot in you know, Rio de Janeiro, but this is more like family kind of resting where people see the daughters and sons just to come for the summertime. You know, it's good. Some food. Let's go see the main attraction. So they have a, the main attraction is you have the wheel and they have like a, a step, not a step, um, a road that leads up. I think it's over that way or that way. I, know, I think it's that way. Yeah, it rolls a lead, kind of leads up a hill, and people take the pictures a lot there. Yeah, there's not much adventure here. So this is a good place to. I think it might be a good place to hook up, up because lots of girls have nothing to do here. Uh, Rio de Janeiro is always stressful. It's always adventures to do. So I'm coming here for a weekend or something, but I couldn't imagine living here. I just get too bored. Uh, I need adventure. I need stuff to do. I need training. Need to go to the gym and surfing and everything around Rio, but. This is the same kind of atmosphere 
I'll, I'll tell you now my story how I got robbed in Sao Paulo just now. I got robbed in Sao Paulo uh, just before I came here, the bus, just before I got the bus here. Just before I got the coach here, and I think it never happens. I think it's because the second I smoke, like, I'm, I do feel a bit, not, not high, but like, the second the smoke really affects me, and I just feel really relaxed. And I know it sounds stupid, but the first time I got robbed in Brazil was after I just spent two nights in Niceroy, and I came back to the main city of Rio de Janeiro. And now the last time I got robbed in Brazil was after I just spent a, a few days in Niceroy, in Niceroy Charter. That's because Niceroy is just like really peaceful. It's like, like this. It makes you have that like, sinking energy. So it makes you feel relaxed. So when you go back to like uh, the uh, jungle and, you know, the city jungle of uh, Sao Paulo, Centro, or the dangerous places of Rio de Janeiro, or the dangerous places of Sao Paulo. Sao Paulo is Centro. It's just hell on earth. It's hell on earth, man. Like, as soon as you get out, when you arrive at the bus station, as soon as you go out, it's just hell. It's the worst place on this planet. Just uh, full of black guys trying to rob you. I know it sounds kind of racist, but you realise it's true. I mean, I know it's black guys in USA that are really the most nicest people you can ever meet. Because they got a lot of racism, a lot of disc discrimination against them. But being a white guy in Brazil is the same as being a black guy in America. Um, you got a lot of racism stuff against you in love. You see, uh, um, except for people try and rob you, the opposite in, in Brazil, people just try and rob you all the time, like uh, in Sao Paulo. Like I was just on my phone outside a cafe and this guy just came with it. No one did anything, no one did anything. And it was the most worst time, most horrible experience of getting robbed. I've been robbed four times and he just put it with me. He just got, oh yeah, whatever. Um, they need it more than me. I can get the money some other. Huh? You know, I'll get paid uh, next week anyway, so. But last that time was just horrible. Like no one did anything. He, he literally tried to fight me on the street and no one did anything. And I think it's because of the weed in my system, well, I might look high like a, something because that's why I'm here. Hopefully I'll get the weed on my system, then I can go back to Rio and I can continue training properly. Because right now I just, I need to get out of my system. I need to, so far I'd take time to get out of my system. After a bit of rest time and uh, then we go back to Rio and do it properly. But yeah, it was horrible. Downtown Sao Paulo is the most disgusting place on this planet. It's a bit like, downtown Rio, the most horrible place. And people don't realise that. People are too scared to say the truth. People say, people say oh, Brazilians are so nice, Brazilians are so nice. No, Argentinians are nice. Brazilians, mostly north of Brazil, the black Brazilians, the ones on the street, a lot of, in the downtown kind of areas, are the most horrible people on this planet, the most disgusting. Yeah, they just see a white guy and they just try and rob you and like, um, get, you know, they could kill you. They could kill you on the street and no one would do anything. The police won't do anything. They'll just look shocked because everyone's too scared to do anything. But yeah, so it's good to come here. But that's the reason, I think that's one part of the reason I got robbed because of, um, I was, I felt and looked too rich. I, I, I looked too at ease with myself. Usually when I'm around Brazil, I usually train every single morning, do, do some press, do some sit-ups, and go, oh, I gotta look good, I gotta look tough, I gotta look, I gotta look strong. But after it's quite charter, I just felt so relaxed and so happy. And I think I gave up the ease of just looking so peaceful. And if I thought, oh, look at this guy looking at, Look, he's coming over to Brazil and having sex with all our girls or whatever, and he, he looks so happy, he looks so at ease, he's got his long hair and his hippie kind of lifestyle, I'm going to rob him. Um, so yeah, and that's what happens after Niteroi. Niteroi just makes you feel so peaceful and so at ease. And then you go back to the uh, the main city lifestyle and like, or downtown, like Sao Paulo or Rio Janeiro, and people see that and yeah, people see, look at this guy, I hate this guy, I'm going to... Same as in high school, it seemed, like I remember if you're really happy, like when I first went to high school, when, when I first got bullied when I was like 11 years old, before I started to do kickboxing, I always looked really happy, I looked really, uh, and obviously people don't, guys don't like that, you, you can't go around being happy and skinny and everything, so, so I was really skinny as a, you know, everyone was like, as a teen. So yeah, same kind of uh, concept, you know, look at this guy being really happy, you know, and you know, and not looking tough or whatever. It's, so I just, I, the past week in Squad Chad, I was really relaxed, really happy. Kind of feeling like a little kid, you know, again, you know. Really, really eased, just smart, walking on the street, smiling in my face, looking really happy. Da, da, da. That's what happened when I got robbed at four o'clock in the morning, I eating popcorn, took it easy. But yeah, as soon as you take it easy, that's when they see you and they rob you, sink your energy. So yeah, that's a lesson learned anyway. I should have known, I, I, I was aware that I was going to get robbed. I was, I was looking all around. They only robbed like 50 rails for me. They didn't rob my phone or anything important because I was smart, I ran away. I was always aware. Uh, I'm always aware. So as soon as I saw them, I put my stuff in my bag and I started running away. And um, started kicking me as I was running away, some coked up teen. 
uh, some skinny little, little, little boys run after me, like a group of them, obviously. And I got away from them. But no one did anything. Everyone just looked at me. Like I even tried to ask some people to ring the police. And the, the guy behind the counter, the guy in the cafe, just did nothing. He and the end, he was in the hotel. I went to the hotel entrance. I said, Can you ring the police? Can you ring the police? And they just looked at me and they just did nothing. They didn't believe me. The guy, the, ro the guy that was trying to rob me was telling him, I think he was telling him that I robbed him. That I robbed money of him and he wants his money back. Because they were treating me like I was a criminal. Like, what the fuck? If they didn't, then it's really screwed up. It's really fucked up, right? But that's what they do. They won't get you. Think you walk in the street, you think some people are going to help you ring the police just because you're white or whatever. You know, no, they're not going to help you. They just look at you, even if they stab you or whatever. I was stupid. I should have just given whatever he was after, but I was so in adrenaline moment. I didn't fight back. I just wanted to get away because I had a bus waiting for me. I could have easily killed him. He was a little teen, but, you know, I didn't want to... Him to whip out a knife or whatever, because anyone, if you whip, if you whip a knife, and that's it. Hey, these these are little pirate boats. These are what people come here for. The Argentinians are pirate wine. It's like a, a new pirate wine girl that came here. They stay in a hostel, and the main thing they do, they get a picture taken over there, it's sort of cover Instagram or whatever, up the road. The wine's up and it has a whole view of the whole of Banda Rio Camarillo. And the second thing they do is they do um, these pirate kind of tours, like foot pirates. You go on here and they have like. Role playing kind of pirates, which is fun. And the third thing they do is go to Beta Carrero, which is a. a. Um, like a fun fair, like a theme park. It's like Lego World. Lego World in England, you have all these statues and theme parks and roller coasters. And uh, statues look good next to dinosaurs and stuff like that. Really colourful. And the girls go there to take the picture, to look good with, good with colourful buildings and everything. So nice girls get a picture taken here, but they don't look as good because the steam isn't it? as pristine as real. But yeah, this is where all the other seniors come to relax. See, look at everyone looking cheeky and rich. You can't look rich on Rio de Janeiro, but everyone can come here. The rich people can come here and look rich without having to worry. Rio de Janeiro is too much of a war zone for the old. Yeah, even now, I just feel at ease. I feel like I'm back in England or something. The same kind of feeling you get when you're in the United States or England, you can actually relax. It's good because uh, obviously the stress is bad for you. The stress is going to kill you, so obviously I need it. I need to escape from Rio because the stress was just uh, always being in danger all the time. It's cool to be uh, intelligent people again. So I need this just, just for a breather. And then I'll probably head, head, to, head to Porto Alegre next. If you have any comments, just let me know where I should head next or anything. But anyways, let's go see the rest of Balneario Camarillo. That's my story. Anyways, for waffling. This is the uh, Balneario Camarillo, the metropolis with the beach. So more down there, you have the outskirts, which has like Hollywood Hills type of building, really rich type of buildings like Petropolis. So, so yeah, it looks just like Petropolis, really lush. Like, uh, I mean, like I would live in these places. Balneario Camarillo, you know, Santa Catarina, Florianopolis, all these places that I'd love to go to escape from Rio. Um, Petropolis, like I said, I want to live there, but there's just no adventure, like it's just a really peaceful place to live in, it's really beautiful. Um, it's so small as well. I call this uh, Balneario Cambrio is like a Petropolis with a beach. Because um, Petropolis would be perfect if it had a beach, but yeah. Like I came walking it. The town's just city's really small, like just that way, five minutes that way, ten minutes that way is the beach. And then five minutes that way is, uh, that's it, that's as big as it gets. Really small, really thin kind of town and it, stretch, it stretches along along the coast. Um, but yeah, when we go that way, Moa has a really pristine kind of white buildings like shopping centers that you see in uh, LA. Um, but yeah, it's good to live if you want to look good for Instagram and all that kind of stuff, you know, but just for me, it's, I wouldn't live here. I just get bored. I would have want adventure. You know, so there's good and bad everywhere. So I have to return to Rio for training and adventures. Some more adventures after today. But yeah, let's go down that way. It's really Nothing ever happens. Lots of Argentinians here speaking last night. Uh, lots of Paraguayans. I heard lots of Spanish speakers. Uh, but yeah, very um, close knit kind of society. You know, like Paraguay. You know, like, you got to look good. You got to look good. You know, they want to be safe, but they can't. These people, they wouldn't last a second in Rio de Janeiro. The Rio de Janeiro would be too much of um, too stressful for them. So they come here, but. Yeah, this is a good escape, really peaceful. It's so nice here, the people are so nice. I've never felt so relaxed in three in uh, three years in Rio, because Rio de Janeiro just becomes a war zone in Sao Paulo after getting robbed in Sao Paulo. But I'll tell you what, I got robbed there. But anyways, let's head to the beach, get some snacks, get some lush, 
all those, you know, all the snacks you have, like the waffles and stuff like that, and um, just you know, stuff you see like uh, those those girls take pictures with all the time. But yeah, they, they won't last second in real because the it, it, real, you know, just eats you alive, you know. So this is the first time, it's so good to feel relaxed. It's good to feel relaxed and no stress, not stressed, and not people barking and going, hello, 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 shouting at me all the time. And crazy and cocaine and uh, coffee all the time, like in Rio de Janeiro. It's good to be in a civilized place again after, you know, that's why I go back to Paraguay to, to relax. So it's good to not feel so stressed all the time and be with uh, cool, intelligent people. First time I've not been stressed in years. <laughs> you know, after being Rio, after Rio, so. Yeah, anyways, let's head to the beach now. Yeah, this is the centre, the main avenue. It's got a sunset now. So yeah, they just had... Uh, obviously, they have a Wonder Woman and a Superman just there. Just speaks to me really cool, but yeah. Really relaxing, really cool though. Actually, just down there, I bought some uh, a really nice ice cream last night. Flavoured ice cream sorbet. Cashkina, it's only like four rails, really nice. Usually when I do that in uh, Rio de Janeiro, I like to like just have a day off where I just walk the street, just get, get, get a cashkina where you know relax and walk the street. Usually you find someone who looks at you thinking, look at this gringo, he's enjoying himself, just eating ice cream, and they usually bark at you, something like, oh, hello, 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 give me some ice cream or whatever. But yeah, but here, I just had some ice cream, it was really peaceful. Um, cashkina, no trouble at all. So yeah, because obviously you know you don't want to take it easy, too easy. You just walk in the street, you know, having some ice cream. You're like a little, like a little kid, you know. I felt like, and obviously in Rio de Janeiro, you get that, you get pe people staring you out, know, going "vola vola." But yeah, it's really peaceful, really nice. So yeah, this is the main street, the main avenue, guys. Uh, so it's like a yeah, like I said, it's like Fifth Avenue in in Playa Carmen, in Brazil. Yeah, you have the main avenue that we just exited, that tourist kind of uh, street. And this is the main kind of street avenue. But really small, see? Really small, you can walk one into the other in like, you know, 20 minutes. Uh, you know, probably 30, 30 minutes, you know, but it's really thin, really thin strip of city. Like, the more you head that, it's just all down this way, it's long, but it's really thin. The more you head that way, it's really short. So we'll head that way now and we'll, um... but yeah, the girl at the beginning of the video, she was, from Sao Paulo, and Polisters are the nicest people ever, so that's why she was she, she uh, was okay with doing a video, she wasn't too shy, because uh, it gets a bit dangerous Sao Paulo, it has the best of both worlds. Yeah, it looks a bit like this, and you have a need of Polister, and you have um, downtown, downtown, which is a bit dangerous, so it pushed them to get out of the comfort zone, and so they're, uh, so they're like foreigners as well, because a lot of them are dangerous, the Brazilians are, they're not dangerous, they're just, uh, Stupid and you know, on the street all the time and desperate for money. So, uh, but yeah, it looks like here. Uh, cool. But I'm looking forward to Porto Alegre next because every single person I met from Porto Alegre is really cool. cool. Uh, and then I'll be ready. I'll be tra I'm training every day, so I'll be ready to go back to Rio and continue training adventures. But yeah, we we'll head back. We head that way, to, like the Hollywood Hills kind of house, really rich kind of mansions. We just turn left here. We'll head back there to see like the uh, Petropolis, Teresopolis kind of houses. It looks like uh, Hollywood Hills. It's not every day you walk into a bar and you see uh, an alien and a robber. Hey, Valio. Oh. Hi. Uh, yeah. Hi. <laughs> it is very queasy. Brazil. Brazil. Hello. Valio. Yeah, this is right near where we started off. We started off just uh, just behind here. I was wondering what this was. I thought this was uh, something from Bolsonaro, but it's a uh, professional volleyball. So this, everyone, I mean, I've, I've practiced volleyball on the beach. It's really cool to get to know people and train and get some exercise, but I just, I just don't see the reason to do it unless you're going to do professional like this. It's really good cool for explosive fitness. Explosive fitness is great for it. It's great for the body, the explosive fitness to get the blood pumping. Great, great for testosterone. Not as good as surfing, but it's like tennis. Sex lives. Yeah, in the main avenue I was talking about, like kind of like Fifth Avenue, just behind here, where we get some food and restaurants and oh, it's the main avenue. Avenue. We're going right now. So yeah, here we are in Europe, back in Europe, in Italy. It's this little, uh, you get a really nice boat here. You won't find that in Rio though. Maybe in Barajuca. So yeah, it's a bit like Petropolis, Teresopolis when they have the beach there, and this is the where people climb up and uh, just walk up and get pit taken, but yeah. 
Yeah, weekend here is good, but after that I just get bored, I think. Just came across a girl who, a woman who uh, tried to get me to go to her club tonight. She says she works at a club here. She's trying to get me to go. Obviously she's a prostitute, like uh, the ones they have in Rio. Um, so yeah, don't do that guys, don't go to club because they just charge you for money, they ask you for money to have sex with them. I think Rio de Janeiro is a lot like that. A lot of Brazil. Uh, it's, people say, oh, they're really nice Brazilians, you have sex with lots of girls. No, it's different. I think USA is better for girls, actually. It depends on what you have to do. If you're a big, fat, black uh, American guy, then yeah, I think you might well do well here. But I think I mentioned that before, I think that might be a video for another day. She had like blonde hair, she had like a really good energy, really good body, but she's just drinking all the time. And she, she had a face of like a an old woman, but the body of like a 20 year old, you know? Because obviously the healthy lifestyle here, the nature. I didn't realize, I she looked really nice when she approached me. She approached me and she was really nice. But obviously she was drinking a lot. It's all about party lifestyle, having sex, and they probably find it hard to live with themselves. And, it's all about party lifestyle. I mean, it's good to comp you got to achieve desires to so you don't die with regrets. That's what I want to do. I don't want to. I want to be in my deathbed and say I uh, did everything. She seemed really happy as well. Lots of girls like that. a lot of promiscuous girls are really happy because they fulfill like, everything, fulfill desires and everything. So that's the way the world should be. And everyone just tries to beat them down to their level. Except me as a guy, like uh, even Sapalo, the guy robbed me because he saw. So I was fitting, you know, blonde hair and everything. It's on me really happy. So I'm gonna beat this guy down. Girls have the same thing. If you're a 10 out of 10 girl, girl like uh, all the, uh, even the 8 out of 10, 7 out of 10s, they just want to beat them down to that level and try and kill them. So, yeah. That's over there, girls. You need so much. Oh, fashion. This is what I got five five and nine. Just get sick of this. Finally found some exercise. In Panama from Rio, there's no there's no Santander bars, so I had to work out. I got I got my bags, so I came with some bags so to do a workout. There's no there's no outdoor gym or anything. This is it's like a fossil is a fossil is just has these bars. And all all beach, there's no workout equipment at all. Just that. <laughs> right, I'm gonna see you right now, guys. Panama or Cambodia is the uh, is Terrasopolis with a beach or Petropolis with a beach. It's just. Please, me, I'm just blown away by how peaceful it is. I can't believe it. Every, like I've just been to this hotel here, and like everyone is just so nice to me. It's unbelievable. I'm not used to it. I'm used to being treated like crap for being uh, for being foreign and having blonde hair and white skin. But hey, it's just so nice. I, I'm just surprised. I'm just blown away by it. Everyone's just so peaceful and so quiet and so tame. It's like the complete opposite of uh, like it looks like Europe, with like people just riding the bike and everything. Just, and they have the beach right there, it's really small. It's just like Terrasopolis, but with, um, the beach, because Terrasopolis is really small, and so is uh, here, so it's great. Because even in Flo Florianopolis, I had to walk miles and miles to get to the beach, but here it's just like a little town, like Terrasopolis with the beach, so it's really just five minute walk that way. It's... But yeah, I can see why people come in. And yeah, obviously, we're having our one meal a day breakfast. We've got breakfast for porn stars. <laughs> We've got the uh, eggs and the uh, watermelon. Which is the best food, best food mixture for high testosterone and making the blood flow down there. And we've got this little thing here, I've not seen this before. I'm just gonna try it out. It's like lasagna for breakfast, but it's like cheese. Yeah, this thing here is like cheese, tomato. I've no idea what that is. Or oh, it's got meat in it as well. So I'm, I'm gonna try it anyway, see if it is, it is meat. Just have a bite. It's like a mix between a lasagna and a cake. But it's not much tomato, it needs to be lasagna. Yeah, lasagna for breakfast. <laughs> yeah. 
That's great though. Best hotel ever. It's really cheap and everyone's just so tight and tame. It's so nice. So yeah, I'll show you the beach anyways and how all these rich buildings that I passed that just remind me of... Um... But yeah, it's like being in... in... It's like it's, this is how I imagine Miami would be like back in Miami where they have the high the high class houses and everything. But I can understand why Argentinians and Paraguayans come here because Sao Paulo and anywhere north of Brazil, anywhere north of here, would be too stressful for them. They can't cope with it because it's too stressful. I mean, this is another place where I want to live. I even want to, if, if, if I had to live anyway, if it wasn't after adventure, I mean, I have to go back to Rio because I have adventures today, we have trainings today. And obviously it pushes you to be best, even though it is very stressful. It's like a war zone. I just got used to the war zone though. I didn't realize how bad I had it. You, you don't realize how bad people have it until you go to a different place. And then... I, still, I thought it was just me. I adapted too much to the stresses and it was, um, I didn't realize how unhealthy it was, you know, how it was killing me. Um, that's why I seem a bit weird sometimes because just, the stresses just make you on edge all the time. Um, especially for years and years and years. It's like years and years and years of being in, in, in a, not yet, just like three years in Rio, but it's like three years of being in a war zone. And now you come to this place, everyone's just so, I can't believe how nice everyone is. It's like I'm whispering now because everyone just whispers and so quiet. It's the complete opposite. Well, it's, it's strange, like even England isn't this tame or even America isn't this quiet and peaceful. They always have like some people who are a bit loud. But like in Rio, in Sao Paulo, it was just like, you don't understand. I mean, people people think about um, Brazil, think Sao Paulo, Rio de Janeiro. And those are horrible places compared to this place. It's just weird. Like I said, the best places are unknown. And anyways, we're gonna walk to the beach. But I have to spend time back to Rio because I need adventures to do. And even though it's stressful as hell and, you know, people, you know, people are horrible as hell, you know. Uh, the majority are anyways, you know, they're deluded, they can't think for themselves. Like, hey, the, the hotel staff was just like so nice. I got suspicious, like, you know, all it, like, when it, I was surprised when I was, in, when I was in Teresopolis, I was treated so nice. But here, here's like another level. Like, um, I, got, I was surprised, like, oh, everyone's so nice in Teresopolis, but then you come here and it's just, it's probably even nicer, or probably just as good. Even the homeless people look rich, you know, it's really strange. But yeah, I can understand why I didn't just come here, because Rio's near, I just got used to the dangers and the, sh the war zone. Um, but yeah, so I, I, need, I need to come place like this, or else it would just kill me, Rio, Rio, Sao Paulo, it's just a war zone. But I've still got adventures to do, still need to do. So yeah, it's a quite charter. Teresopolis, Pet Petropolis, Florinopolis, and now Balneario, Camarillo would be places that I would live, you know, if I was after the peaceful, quiet life, if I wasn't after adventure. But I've still got adventures first. But if you're older, it's a perfect place to live. If you're after the, the, the quiet life. But I think I, I don't know, it's quite hard. I probably... Hey guys, I finally arrived in Baneo, Rio Camberino, and how you pronounce it, but... Yeah, I'm not sure if you can tell the difference, but everywhere is so quiet and so peaceful. Like, look at it, everyone... It's just like the complete opposite of what, like I said before, like every other town I've arrived in in Brazil. Um, every single town I arrived in, like Fortaleza, everyone, everyone. It's just this town that I always arrive in, like the part of the Road of Aria. The, the Road of Aria is a Brazilian Portuguese for a bus station. And the bus station is always in the most horrible, disgusting, dangerous part of the city. And you always get a place where you kind of get robbed. It's the number one place where you get robbed in the city. But hey, it's so peaceful, look at it. It looks like, it's just like Miami or something. Everywhere's so quiet, like I'm even whispering now. I usually, when it comes to a place, I have to shout or something. Like, look at this. I can see why Argentinians and uh, Paraguayans come here, because it's just so quiet. I wasn't expecting to be like this. And you see the building over there, that's probably like the main building. It's not, they don't have much buildings here. It's just, uh, the beach is just like, it's a really small town. It's like smaller than Fort Salazar, so it's, the beach is just like 15 minutes that way, walk, and then that's it. And that's so cool, it's just so relaxing to live here. I mean, I should have come here all along. Uh, I, I, I've only been here five seconds, right? <laughs> just the energy and everything is so nice. I'm not used to it. I'm used to feeling on edge all the time or like I'm going to get robbed or something like that. Um, it's just refreshing to just be able to feel like I can relax after years and years in Rio de Janeiro. Like I left my bag in there and I just don't feel like it's going to get robbed. But I'll tell you my story how I just, I just got robbed on uh, in Sao Paulo. Um, 
almost killed actually. <laughs> um, and uh, when I was uh, waiting in Sao Paulo from the bus here, but hey, it's just here's where the upper class people come. So I can't wait to go to Porto Alegre because that'll be I think it'll, that'll be like this. Just um, but yeah, just the, so peaceful. Like uh, just any. I was walking through and just saw everyone's so look. If you just see people here, they look so rich and so civilized. You know, they're not barking here and get angry or anything. Um, I think, I think an energy is just to quite a child, but this is better. But I thought it's quite a child, it was amazing. But here it's just it's refreshing to see intelligent, classy, smart, uh, beautiful people again. Like, you, you, I, just, I just got walked in the station, I thought, oh, everyone here is so attractive. And so I'm used to seeing horrible people around, uh, homeless kind of people uh, all around Brazil, you know, street, street rats or something. We call them sometimes the da dancing to working people, but here everyone's so classy, so clean. So yeah, I can see why people from Paraguay or Argentina come here because I think uh, the rest, the more you go north from here, the more uh, it'll probably scare Argentinians or Paraguayans. They won't be able to deal with it. It might become a bit too stressful, a bit scary for them. Um, yeah, because they're intelligent, classy people. But yeah, it's like I was in into quite a child. Like I just, I just took some, like I just panned my video to some intelligent people here, but. Um, yeah, when I did that in Itzquai Chada, when I showed a, a video of a guy in Itzquai Chada, even in Itzquai Chada, the guy said, oh, no video, no video, because he doesn't want a video of him. But I just showed some videos to some guys here, and none of them are barking at me. It's really cool. It's really cool to just feel like uh, I can relax for the first time in years. That's cool. So, yeah, but uh, there's stuff to do, though. I've still got to do training in Rio, so I'm going to go back to Rio and have adventures there. It's good to feel like um, I'm not stressed out all the time, so, yeah. And also, it's a, bit, it's a bit cold, I just had to put on a, it's a bit, it's a bit chilly, so uh, even though the sun's out, um, it's a bit chilly on the ride over, over here, but um, yeah, I, was, I don't know, it's just different, but like when the sun's coming out, the sun feels different when it's a bit chilly, when it's not really humid, like it feels like Buenos Aires, like the sun feels really nice on your skin, with the... Uh, the cold air with the sun, it's um, the fresh air with the sun, it feels fresh, if you know what I mean. If that makes sense anyway. I don't know, you know when you wake up in the spring, the spring sun feels different from the summer sun in the morning, because you have the cold air and uh, the, the sun hits much better, rather than the humidity, it just feels more, much more fresh. And as I stop waffling, I'm all get doing camp on the real, Cambodio, however I'm gonna pronounce it. But yeah, everyone's so peaceful and so nice here. speak to here as well. It isn't as loud as Rio, like uh, the one in Rio has. It has a <laughs> it has a uh, people from uh, in Rio, you know, it has like people shouting for taxi, 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 but it's, uh, it's a bit, it's always grey though, that thing, it's always like, there's no sunshine coming through. It's always grey when you're in Rio. It's, 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 it's always raining every single time, eh? it's never been sunny, it's really strange. But in the downtown, in um, Avenida Polisse, it was so sunny there, it was so strange. And she says, <laughs> it's like a constant dark light over it. Oh, it was so good. Yeah, it's one of my dreams. I've got one of my goals to play piano. It's just got to get a piano or the teacher. Uh, yeah, no one ever speaks to me, really. So you go a bit crazy sometimes, you know, no one speaks to see you at all, so you, that's why I do training so much all the time, I'm always on the go, I get a bit down sometimes, because no one speaks yet, especially if you don't speak Portuguese, you don't have a conversation, like in years, proper conversation. Yeah, well, we're waiting for the uh, coach to Santa Catarina, they have this piano here, and they used to have a, there's always one guy who plays piano, who can play piano here, and he always plays in this piano, he plays something magical, I don't know if he's paid to be here, but... play the piano and play Blind Willie McTell by Bob Dylan. That's one of my that's one of my goals in life. I've got to do it. Soon, one day soon. Just gonna find someone to teach me. But yeah, when I first arrived here in uh, Sao Paulo station, I, I hated it. I thought this was the most miserable, greyest. I mean, it's always raining for some reason here. 
I mean, it's like, it's like the rest of Sao Paulo is really sunny and really nice, but this central Sao Paulo is just horrible. It's disgusting, full of horrible people outside. Who, like, it's like a bit of a Mad Max movie, like downtown Rio, who are just waiting to rob you and run after you. Um, but yeah, the rest of Sao Paulo really makes up for it. The, the main centre, it's completely opposite. But here, when you first arrived, always when you arrive in cities, they always... It's like Belo Horizonte, Rio de Janeiro, uh, Fortaleza, every single city where you arrive in, when you arrive by coach, you arrive in the um, city centre downtown, and where the bus station is, it's usually the worst, most disgusting part of the city, which is weird, you know, they want to make a great impression on tourists, but they don't, they, they put the, uh, the bus station, the coach station or whatever, in the worst, most disgusting part of the city, always, every single place they've been around Brazil. When I first arrived, I hated this place. It's really miserable, and just the hotels nearby, just oh, the disgusting people, just, just, just trying to rob you the money. Yeah. But I wish I was back in Italy, quite charter, but we'll be in Balneario, Cambodia soon, which is going to be the same kind of people, so same kind of tranquil lifestyle I'm, I'm, I'm thinking of, you know. So we'll get to see, uh, cause I'm, you know, I've been months without karaoke, so it'd be good to see uh, what other Santa Catarina and Argentinians and Uruguayans are like. And, Paraguayans, they go on holiday there, so let's go. System because I just feel really lethargic and slow. Yeah, this is in the daytime. Well, kind of daytime because it's overcast now. It's about five o'clock. But it's just a bit sunny before, but uh, it's been a bit overcast to the change in the seasons. But yeah, it's the, finally the ferry over to Niteroi, back to uh, the city. Sometimes when you're um, doing the um, ferry over here, the planes just fly right over here, right over here. When we get near the airport, they just fly right over your head. Really you have Christ over here, missing the right, and then powder Shukra straight ahead. And then even into it, I just feel so peaceful. Like even into it, I just feel like I'm in a, a dreamland state. Maybe it's the uh, second I smoke my wine. I mean, I still, I still feel a bit high. Like. Say you don't, you don't get high off second smoke, but trust me, you do if you uh, really, if you don't smoke or drink, you know, it really, it's like, it's like when you, you know, you see like a guy who drinks half a, half a beer, you know, I, I can drink half a beer and I can get drunk of it, because I, I never drink, but um, same thing really, really affects you, it's, it's a system if you don't have any, 
don't know how many tolerance to it, so yeah. Yeah, so I think I'm gonna... I don't think... Yeah, because I, I just feel like sleeping and eating all the time, so... I'm gonna go into draining the door every day, you know, back to my Days to talk about yourself, so I'm going to take a trip to Santa Catarina, Balneario, Cambria, where I've always been to go. So probably already got, always been there. You know, you know, probably get trouble anyway. So this this time maybe went out soon, so. Instead of following training, we'll just go straight there. I've got to do training, I've got to do these adventures, I've got to do these adventures for this one. You know, you've got limited time, you never know when it can stop, so anything can happen. So I'm going to just do a quick trip there, round trip, maybe go to Puerto Alegre. Uh, see you guys later, because that's, everyone says, oh, that's where they have all the time for people going there, you know, and all the sexy Argentinians go there, and, you know, yeah, European kind of style people go there, so I'm going to go there. Passport. It's a ball. It's gonna be like a two-day bus. It's got nice tinnies, is it? Yeah, that's good. It's good to see some nice tinnies here. Because after a while, Brazilians just uh, gonna do your head in with all the coffee and all the cocaine high up, and just got robbed as well. So doubt that happened. Well, don't want to jinx out. Doubt that happened. Uh, where I'm going now, where there's lots of intelligent Argentinians and European types. Yes, can't wait. So happy. <laughs> so happy. Should be yeah, a bit like Florianopolis, so we'll get some good food and good rest and there's some Italian style beaches. I've got my subway here. Yeah, this is in the daytime. Well, kind of daytime because it's overcast now. It's about five o'clock. But it's just a bit sunny before, but uh, it's been a bit overcast to the change in the seasons. But yeah, it's the, finally the ferry over to Niteroi, back to uh, the city. Planes wind sometimes when you're um, doing the um, ferry over here, the planes just fly right over here, right over here. When we get near the airport, they just right over your head. Really cool. so, uh, Christ over here, missed the right, and then powder shooker straight ahead. And then even into it, I just feel so peaceful. Like, even into it, I just feel like I'm in a, a dreamland state. 
maybe it's the uh, second smoke amount one. I mean, I still, I still feel a bit high, like. say you don't you don't get high off second smoke but trust me you do if you uh, really if you don't smoke or drink you know it really it's like it's like when you you know you see like a guy who drinks half a half a bit you know I, I can drink half a bit and I can get drunk of it because I, I never drink but um same thing really really affects you it's, it's a system if you don't have any have, have any tolerance to it so yeah yeah so I think I'm gonna yeah, because I just feel like sleeping and eating all the time, so I think I'm going to drain in the door every day, you know, back to my It's a few more days to talk about myself, so I'm going to take a trip to Santa Catarina, Balneario, Cambrio, where I've always been to go, so I've probably already got, always been there, you know, you know, we get trouble anyway, so this, this time we went out soon, so...
Lethargic and slow. Yeah, well, we're waiting for the uh, coach to Santa Catarina. They have this piano here, and they usually have uh, always one guy who plays piano who can play piano here, and he always plays in this piano. He plays something magical. I don't know if he's paid to be here, but. play piano and play Blind Willie McTell by Bob Dylan. That's one of my that's one of my goals in life. I've gotta do it. Soon, one day soon. Just gonna find someone to teach me. But yeah, when I first arrived here in uh, Sao Paulo station I, I hated it. I thought this was the most miserable, greatest. I mean it's always raining for some reason here. I mean it's like it's like the rest of Sao Paulo is really sunny and really nice, but this central Sao Paulo is just horrible. It's disgusting, full of Horrible people outside who like, it's like a bit of a Mad Max movie, like downtown Rio, who are just waiting to rob you and run after you. Um, but yeah, the rest of Sao Paulo really makes up for it. The, the main centre, it's completely opposite. But here, when you first arrived, always when you arrive in cities, they always, it's like Belo Horizonte, Rio de Janeiro, uh, Fortaleza, every single city where you arrive in, when you arrive by coach, you arrive in the um, city centre downtown, in, where the bus station is. It's usually the worst, most disgusting part of the city, which is weird. You know, they want to make a great impression on tourists, but they don't. They, they put the, uh, the bus station, the coach station, or whatever, in the worst, most disgusting part of the city. Always, every single place I've been around Brazil. But yeah, this, when I first arrived, I hated this place. It's really miserable, and just the hotels nearby, just oh, the disgusting people, are just, just trying to rob you the money. Yeah. But I wish I was back in East quite Charter, but. We'll be in Balneario, Cambodia soon, which is going to be the same kind of people, so same kind of tranquil lifestyle I'm, I'm, I'm thinking of, you know, so we'll get to see, uh, cause I'm, you know, I've been months without karaoke, so it'd be good to see uh, what other Santa Catarina and Argentinians and Uruguayans are like, and Paraguayans, they go on holiday there, so well, there's guys. Here we go, we've just arrived. I think it, it, this is either the guy, I think they do maintenance on the, uh, to try and fix it. Yeah, because I pressed a few keys and a few keys weren't working, so he's doing maintenance on it. I thought he was the guy that comes along and plays every day. He's usually the... I don't think there's a guy that plays every day. It's just, uh, I think they just visitors and passes through, but here, I think the few black keys weren't working. So he's going to fix it. Yeah, it's this, this right outside here. I, I pressed some black keys there and they weren't working on the, uh, the right side. I'll show you where I got robbed now. I got robbed just down there near the entrance. Uh, without even knowing it. Uh, someone rubbed my back while I was looking for distance, but I'll show you that now. Yeah, we're gonna fix it. This is a the fixed piano, interesting. Ah, they tune the keys, just like a... Uh, strings attached to the keys, just like in a, a guitar. Yeah, I think this guy is definitely a paid guy, because uh, yeah, not many people just wander the street who can play piano like this, who are just, uh, who are just traveling from bus to bus who can play piano like this. And he plays it all day as well. Like, uh, he's been here for a few minutes and he just played song after song. He played Frank Sinatra and everything. And now we're just onto this. Yeah, that's one of my dreams to play piano. Lids. One of my goals I've got to do to play Blind Willie McTell by Bob Dylan. If you've never heard Blind Willie McTell, go listen to it because it's the best song you've never heard. It's amazing. Yeah, 
has a value of it has a people from uh, in Rio, you know, it has like people shelter for taxi, 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 but it's, a, it's a bit, it's always grey though, that thing, it's always like, there's no sunshine coming through, it's always grey when you're it's, it's, it's always raining every single time, eh? it's never been sunny, it's really strange, but in the downtown, in um, Avenida Polista, it's, it was so, sunny there, it's so like strange, it's, just, it's, it's like a constant dark light over it. Just got to get a piano or the teacher. Uh, yeah, no one ever speaks to me, really. So you go a bit crazy sometimes, you don't, no one speaks to you at all. So you, that's why I do training so much all the time. I'm always on the go. I give it down sometimes because no one speaks to you, especially if you don't speak Portuguese. You don't have a conversation like in years. Proper conversation. Yeah, this is where I got robbed, normally. I was standing right there. Uh, yeah, I was saying before, like, no one ever speaks to me, but that was only... I shouldn't be standing here before phone up because homeless people come sometimes run up from the street and they, and they rob you. And they have a lot of people here. You see that guy there, that might be uh, some kind of robber. Just always tell them out. But yeah, um... Yeah, the same point. Like, not many people speak to me, but you know, um, obviously you gotta go to nice places. It kind of pushes you well because people talk, talk, and talk, and talk, and they end up not doing anything. Like in Argentina, all they do is talk and talk and talk, and you know, uh, you know, Brazilians together when they all they do is uh, talk and talk and talk and say cafes and everything. But I've watch out with my phone here. But yeah, um, but yeah, I was, it, except for when I was, except for when I was in East Quite Charter yesterday. Um, I'll tell you the story of how I got robbed in a bit. But I was in East Quite Charter and the Argentinians, like I was saying, Argentinians are the nicest people ever. Like, um, all these stereotypes about different people are wrong. Like, everyone says Brazilians are the nicest, most sweetest people ever, and Argentinians are really ignorant. No, like, the stereotypes of that country is the opposite, is always true. Um, Argentinians, like, they're the only ones who approach me and we talk and talk and talk. We talk for hours. Uh, like, the Argentinian in the, um, that I met at the beaches and they offered me a job and everything. And, and so I told me to come live with them in, in uh, Buenos Aires, which is uh, I want to do when um, I've done everything in Rio. I love Palermo Soho. Um, not, but yeah, when I was, I was in it's quite hard, and another Argentinian guy who worked there was talking for ages. We made a really good conversation because they have the, we have the same like kind of European blood as well. Because many uh, Argentine, I think Argentine is like 54% European blood. So we have we can talk. We have that that energy, that same energy. You know, if we're European, you know. It's, like if, like, like if you're black or American or Portuguese here, you'll have the same kind of energy as Brazilians, obviously. We all have the same kind of different blood. Um, but yeah. And uh, what was I saying? <laughs> yeah, and, and he made me some soup. And he, he, was up, he made me some... He knew I was vegetarian, so he made me some vegetarian kind of vegan soup. And I was like, that's really nice. Not many people do that. I mean, just, it's so pleasant to talk to. But yeah, really makes you happy to talk to him. After a while, if you don't have a good conversation, you just go over it, you know... Need something to keep active. That's why I'm always training, always pushing myself, because as well. But it's kind of good as well. You have to push yourself if you don't have a uh, lots of talk. But anyways, I was standing there, in my back, and I was looking out, seeing if it was sunny, because every time I'm here, it's just always cloudy for some reason. I, I pass through here mil tons of times, one, like maybe 20 times total, and it's always been raining. I was just looking out at the sky, see if it's going to be any sun. I was just like, I just woken up, just trying to wake myself up uh, after a hotel and um, passing through and. I didn't realize that I had my, my bag obviously had like a hole in it or something or like um, my bag was open like like, like like here I have this bag here and uh, sometimes a zipper or something something isn't working and I had my red shorts my, my favorite red, red swim, swimming shorts and then I went off to the next destination then I realized my red, uh, guy was standing behind me this whole time and a guy here a security guy was shouting like, hey 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 something's happened I think he was trying to tell me that uh, I was getting robbed but, yeah yeah, that guy there was looking at me strange. He had tattoos all over his face. So. But it might, it might be cool, you know. Usually the ones that look homeless usually walk on here, so should be careful. But yeah, anyways, he was standing behind me. I thought nothing was happening. Uh, I thought he was just standing behind me, just some homeless person. But I, I wasn't scared because I didn't have anything valuable in my back behind me. But he, uh, I realised I went to a security guy here was going, hey, 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 shouting some valor, sh shouting something like a. Uh, wasn't making any any noise, any sounds or anything. Like just like a grunting, Arr! you know, like they do. It. And um, but yeah, I just ignored him. I thought nothing was happening. But he probably didn't care. He's, you know, he's, he's just robbing a foreign. You know, it doesn't matter. Rob some red shorts. Probably need him more than I do. Uh, 
Uh, so yeah. Anyways. So yeah, that guy there. He just talks to you. Just no reason. Should be careful. We got a security woman here, so that nah, should be alright. I can protect myself. Someone just punch him in the face if someone turns fast. Grab my phone. Just knock him out. <laughs> just a quick, quick, quick jab. But obviously they don't care if they get killed, if they get hurt. If they get, if they get hurt, then they go to hospital or they go to jail. It's better than spending their lifetime on the streets like they do here. So it's win-win for them. So they don't care. They don't care if you're big or tough or anything. If you knock them out, they get to a bed in a hospital or a jail. And that's a win for them. So yeah, and I was just standing here and... Yeah, and I realised... Went to, went to my next destination, I think I was... Uh, Fosdy Gwazi again, like I hate going Fosdy Gwazi, but and I realised my red shorts were missing, so I realised the guy here must have, a homeless guy must have robbed it, behind me must have robbed it. So always be careful, guys, that's how they do it, especially got a hole in your bag or your bag behind you, they're just different. Yeah, as you can see here, Monday, it's totally different. And the rain, it's overcast. It's even more empty if it's even possible. But yeah, this beach reminds me of the beaches in America and USA. Really long, like in uh, back in LA. So you can miss, so you can look a bit like here in LA, especially the water and it's so free. Never blanket here, you never see blankets in a real, more European style. Yeah. Just finished training. I'm going to dip in the sea, and then we're going to head to Porto Alegre. It's really peaceful. Porto Alegre, because it's just uh, every time I meet some really cool people, some Euro like European kind of blood, the more in the south, and especially from Porto Alegre. So I'm just going to check it out, and I should be ready to get back to training. Um, back in the back in the war zone of Rio de Janeiro. Now I've had my rest. Yeah, guys, that's the uh, famous path. One of the famous paths, just where people walk up a lot. And that was crowded like Saturday, but now it's completely empty. Yeah. So we're just going to head to Porto Alegre next. And then I need to head back to Rio because I'm running out of time. So I need to head back to Rio. There's so much I have to do. So much more adventures and everything. So yeah. This is going to sound strange, but it smells like England. You know like when you arrive, you get off the plane in England, you have that fresh air. It just hits you in the face. Especially if it's a hot country, that fresh cold air. Hits you in the face and you feel the, uh, you feel the air, you feel the wind, you feel everything. Because uh, Rio's near, it's really humid kind of heat. And um, yeah, and it has that fresh island kind of smell like because England you know Britain's an island so it's has a and the water isn't um, as clean as uh, Rio de Janeiro but it's, it feels fresh you know it feels cold and chilly which is great really wakes you up it's a good place to surf actually because in Rio de Janeiro the waves are here but the reason it's more for beginning surfing so I should have brought my surfboard in and surfed it because Rio de Janeiro is too dangerous to surf in after door you have deaths like you have a um, like remember after door they have rocks here they have like a few deaths every year. Um, the police don't do anything about it. It's just it's too crowded as well. Uh, yeah, it's a couple of surf not many people. It's just it's like the Miami or LA of uh, Brazil. So yeah, and another, another strange thing. I got sunburned for the first time in years. I mean, being vegan and vegetarian, you know, I never get sunburned. It's strange, like. I think the sun, you need some kind of like B vitamins or something in your bloodstream to a real life food, but I think here, because of the uh, the chilly weather, the chilly wind, you don't feel like you're getting sunburned, but you actually do. And I've actually got, I never, three years in Brazil, and I've been like, three times I've been sunburned like at the most. Um, when I first arrived, because I was really stupid, and I didn't, didn't realise it. And plus I was eating a bit of meat back there, because uh, Argentina is always eating a lot of meat. Um, I've just come from Argentina. Um, plus, they haven't developed my intelligence of health and what they do to animals and everything. So, but yeah, I just, I, um, yeah, I got some, but it's really, I was really strange. I was walking on the beach here, I just felt kind of chilly, the wind really chill. 
really re uh, refreshing, like England. How cool, isn't it? Yeah, Next shot, sell it. Wow, it's so refreshing. I'm gonna have a, a white moustache. That's the best restaurant in all of Brazil. Really best ribs. Yeah, the main course and the best restaurant of all time. Vikings. 